Hey everyone, welcome to the Curious Girl Diaries podcast. I'm Layla London, aka The Curious Girl. Now just to let you know, this podcast is not suitable for work. It's also not suitable for anybody under 18. But the rest of you consenting adults, let's get ready to talk about my sex life, sex in general, and everything in between in explicit, raunchy, fun detail. All right, here we go. So today I want to do kind of like a potpourri of uh, subjects. I've been having like so many interesting little sidebar, uh, you know, topics, conversations, messages, just things kind of popping up on my radar with um, various subject matters. And I thought, you know, I've kind of got something to say, a little bit, a little bit to say about a few things. So. Let's uh, jump right in with psycho stalkers. Now, this seems to be, it's interesting. Lately, I've been getting so much of this from guys telling me, um, you know, just some guys that I chat with, also guys that I see, you know, giving me their psycho stalker stories. Um, And, you know, it's interesting because Depending on, it's funny because depending on the guy and the, their circumstances, some of them will say, well, it's mostly older women. And then a lot, some of them will say, oh, it's a younger woman thing. You know, and then I, I'm kind of laughing because I'm thinking, well, you know, certainly I have my psycho stalker stories. And I'm thinking, it's just a human nature, human being thing, unfortunately. And, you know, I'm, I'm really curious about why that is and what, you know, um, Oh, for Pete's sake, I forgot to turn that off. There we go. I'm going to turn that on silent. Okay. Um, But so I'm wondering, you know, what the fuck is driving this? I mean, what, what drives somebody to be a stalker and where are the, where, and where is it, where do you start becoming a stalker? Where's the line? I mean, um, I will say this. It does seem to me, and I hate to say this. But based on what I've heard in the feedback and everything, in my experience, it it does seem like stalking, the stalking can, and I don't even, it's like, I feel bad I'm going to go on record saying this, but it feels like the stalking can lend itself to being more female, more, more female driven. Now, I only say that because and I'm in this category too, because I'm a female, but you know, women were more, we tend to be more emotional. And, you know, as I've said before, I tend to feel like I'm more in touch with my masculine side emotionally, but I certainly do have, you know, my female side, of course, you know, and, but I've never, not that I'm stalking anybody, but I'm just saying, I, you know, I, I can, I can see where, you feel something as a female, you're feeling something. And instead of, you know, taking a rational approach to that, because it starts with the feeling and then the reaction that you have to it is either appropriate or inappropriate. So, you know, you can like somebody and be passionate about them. And that can drive you to, that can drive you to be open and honest and communicate with them and express that and say, this is how I'm feeling. Or it could drive you to a completely different end of the continuum (laughs) where you're, you know, batshit crazy and you're stalking them and whoever else they're seeing and whatever, you know, you're just doing some weird shit. I do find that, um, from what I've heard and what I've experienced, it seems like you know, women, while they'll get what they can get, like they'll, they will lose sight of some sort of, you know, um, emotional rationality. They'll lose something of that and sort of let their emotions carry them. That I think that, and that's, that's for guys. And that can, that's annoying. You know, that's going to be annoying and bothersome and all that. But I think, you know, it's interesting. I think for me, what I can say is the difference is on my side is, or I've had guys that were kind of weird and stalkerish. It was, 
Um, you know, the difference is as a female, you more fear for your safety, you know, that it, the, the levels that it goes here, you know, are, are, can be a little, there's a creepy factor on the guy side. It gets creepy with women. You know, it can be annoying. It's annoying. But with guys, you know, it can get creepy and sometimes a little, you know, scary or concerning, you know, where, where, you know, you could be concerned for your safety. So, you know, we kind of have, again, this root cause, I think that where everybody is feeling something, even the normal person feels those feelings. And then it's really just about how somebody's going to shoot off and start reacting to it. Um, you know, I don't know what really drives this, but it's been, um, it was, it was presented to me that, you know, that women do this and most women do this and that, you know, I probably might be surprised to find out how that, that some of my friends are like this. I don't think so. You know, I don't, I don't think so. I think that, um, again, certain people are going to get a little crazy, get out there. And for me, you know, I think if you have ongoing existing stalkers in your life, uh, you know, I mean, unless they're just flat out doing you know, criminal stuff, criminal behavior, there's ways to get rid of it. Um, if you're getting constant barrage of messages and inappropriate texts and contact from somebody, block them, you know, and if you don't and you let it continue, there's something about it that you like, you know, so you're kind of becoming part of the problem. You're fostering it a bit. Um, for me, you know, depend. It, you know, it'll depend on what the circumstance is and how serious I believe it to be. Um, you know, I I had one guy that just kept. He basically just had a conversation, ongoing conversation with himself. He would send me messages, and I never responded. And then there would be another one, and another one, and literally, like I just watched him play out this whole conversation, one sided conversation with himself and in his head. And, and let him, basically, I watched as he talked himself through the whole thing and without me <laughs> saying a word. And the truth is, you know, I did find it kind of somewhat amusing. And instead of blocking him, I let it go because I was kind of like, well, shit, what's he going to say next? He kind of left me with a cliffhanger here. Like he left himself and he left me with a cliffhanger with this last message. Like, what, how is he going to, how is he going to? spin out of this one. And he always found a way to sort of like talk himself off the ledge. And, you know, I found it, I did, I found it amusing. And like I said, this went on for several weeks. And again, without me having, giving one response or having to say a word. So, uh, you know, that's not, to me, that's not normal behavior. It's not certainly somebody I want to be going out with, but, you know, selfishly I did, you know, let it play out for my own, you know, amusement. Uh, and, and he just eventually went away and I, I didn't have to block him. Now I did have another guy who, um, was, I felt the things he were saying could be harmful to me. And, you know, really there it, it was creepy you know it was creepy so i definitely blocked that guy for sure um but you know i don't know i mean it's just there's so many varying degrees of this you know when you say oh stalker or someone says you know they're they're a stalker um and weird possessive little things you know that people start doing that you see, I mean, I, I can pretty much catch it in the beginning. I will nip that shit in the bud. If you're doing something that is, you know, not 
cool or in any way, you know, possessive or weird, I will call you out on that shit. You know, I don't like it. It's not my thing. I don't find it attractive. And, you know, it serves no purpose. If you want to have a serious conversation or a frank conversation about what's bugging you, what's on your mind, how you're feeling, I'm never going to, when somebody comes to me and says, this is how I'm feeling, I'm, you know, I'm never going to, you know, give them any judgment or ridicule or anything like that about that. If somebody's open and honest and they're just saying, you know, Hey, here's what I'm struggling with. I don't like, you know, it's bothering me that you're seeing other people. I mean, certainly I've had those conversations right before with guys and I get it. You know, it's like, I understand. I can understand why this, that would not be your first choice. Right. But, and that's different though. Those again, so that's what I'm saying. I think the, it's interesting because I think the genesis of all of this, as I see it, all this weird behavior that so many people, not just myself, but so many people that I encounter have experienced with people, with other people, you know, is, is that those individuals don't want to just say, you know, you know, I'm spending time with you and here's what I'm feeling. And it's, you know, they don't want to put it out there. And so they feel that and then they react to it in a way that's inappropriate. So, you know, it doesn't start out inappropriate. It's just where they take it <laughs> goes to a weird, you know, a, a weird place. Um, and, you know, and where, where is, what, what is stalking and where, you know, where does it start and stop? I mean, I've, you know, I've had, um, like I've mentioned before in the beginning, I used to give out my actual number, you know, and then I started using some apps and stuff like that. Um, but in the beginning, you know, people were reversing the number and finding out things about me. And I, I never thought of that, you know, and the more I've done this, the more I think about my just, uh, you know, on some level, my, you know, my own, my personal safety, you know, and privacy as well. Um, and yeah, it's weird. I mean, it's strange how instead of just asking you, you know, somebody wants to sort of investigate you behind your back. I mean, you can ask me anything, you know, I'm an, I am to some degree, I won't say I'm an, you know, I hate when people say I'm an open book. I'll do my best to answer something. If you ask me something that I just am uncomfortable with, I'll tell you, I don't, you know, I'm uncomfortable answering that and I'll tell you why. But, you know, I prefer just straight, flat out, direct, and, you know, frank discussions, not this weird, you know, <laughs> I, I'm going to, I'm going to go behind your back and research the hell out of you. Um, again, you know, you can, but it's probably not gonna, you know, get you ultimately what you're seeking, you know, and if you tell me about it after the fact, it's, I'm probably going to feel like creeped out. <laughs> like, why didn't you just ask me, you know, we're adults here, let's talk. But so when does, you know, when, again, when does the stalking, like, what is, a, what's, you know, what's the stalking behavior? I mean, I, as an example, um, like with like, you know, some of the guys, I, like, like, let's take Clark, for example, I'll, you know, like, I'll be thinking about him and like, I have, believe me, I have tons of pictures of him and stuff in my phone, but sometimes I'm like, I want to see that one picture you know, that's on his profile. I'll look at his profile and he's got some little videos on there, some little jack off videos. And if I'm looking for some, you know, if I want to get excited, I'm going to masturbate or I, you know, I need some source material. <laughs> I mean, look at that stuff, but it's, you know, that's online under his profile, things like that. Is that stalking? I mean, no, you know, we're already in contact. I don't know. Is that, I mean, is it? I don't think so. Um, and, and, and I have some of my phone too, but you know, just like, if I'm like, oh, I particularly want to see that one, you know, <laughs> um, 
just stuff like that. So I don't, that kind of stuff, like, I don't think, obviously, if you have, like, a public profile, you know, and where you have stuff up, um, is that weird and stocky? I don't think so. I mean, you know, it's up there. I've got my stuff up there. It's like, hey, take a look at it. You know, I don't have any jack off videos or anything like that. <laughs> but, well, obviously, I don't, I don't have a penis, so I'm not jacking off. But, um, yeah, I just, again, I wonder, like, where, you know, how do you, how does one get going down that road? I, I personally don't understand it. Um, but you know, again, part of what makes me, me is, you know, this one side of me, that's just the super control freak that doesn't like, you know, like if I, if I start feeling a certain way, if that feels out of control to me, or inappropriate or, you know, too much focus on someone, I can, I will of course correct that. I mean, I, I just, you know, it's a little like switch, you know, where I'm just like, oh, you got to shut that off. You need to boom. You know, I recognize it and I know, you know, Hey, reel yourself back in, you know, don't, you don't need to go there. Don't get in that weird headspace. So I think that, um, <clears throat> you know, probably the difference, I, you know, I feel like some of these, uh, stalkerish types are, they're just, you know, the harmless ones, let's say the ones that just become annoying to me. You know, I feel what I feel like is they're, um, they're very much in touch with their emotional side. And that's a, that is a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that, except that what they do is they, that, that, they just lead with that. They let that drive them and sort of carry them away. Um, and like I said, I do think, I, I mean, I hate to be the one to say it really, really do. I do think I see this more in women. I do think that from, you know, the feedback I've gotten, cause I know how many, you know, guy stock, you know, what I classify as just stalker behavior, stalkers. I know how many of those I have. And, you know, and then I hear the guy's stories and I just, I think that because women, you know, we tend to be more emotional. I think that, um, you know, more women are, it's, it's more likely that the women will let them carry that too far more so than a man. Um, and I don't know that it's that greater, that much greater of a percentage, but definitely, um, you know, as I've been out there, I'll say dating, you know, I'll use that as a generic term, but, you know, just out there doing this on this whole sexual road trip, you know, um, yeah, I've seen, I've seen, you know, I've seen it happen to me. And then I, and then I see it with the guys that I'm seeing or guys that I just, you know, just when I talk to and get to know, I may not even end up seeing them, you know, we're, and we talk about this stuff. It's, it kind of blows me away and I'm like, wow, you know, it definitely seems, um, a little bit, I'm not going to say to, you know, just this, that that it's a huge thing, but I would say it's, you know, it does, it's the ratio is a little bit higher with the, um, you know, with the females and that's on some levels it makes sense. And on, uh, yes, on some levels it makes a lot of sense. And on other levels, I want to say, ladies, 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 get your shit together. Seriously. Like don't be doing this. You don't need to. You're a female. You're in control of the sex act. You get it. You get that. Get a grip. All right. You need to grab yourself by the back of the neck, haul yourself into the bathroom and have a fucking good conversation with yourself in the mirror. And that means shit, shape the fuck up, <laughs> get some counseling if you need it. But really you don't need to, you know, you do not need to play it like that. So there's my, there's my little, that's my PSA. That's my PSA right there. My public service announcement. <laughs> don't be stalking. It's not attractive. Um, Okay, so moving on from, let's move from stalking to like. Let's talk about the whole like and as you're, as you're dating people, multiple people, or fucking multiple people, however you want to put it. I use the dating term generically, very generically. 
Um, but you know, with some, with some people that's, that is what I'm doing and it's not obviously exclusive, but, um, I see them, I've been seeing them over time regularly, regularly. And, um, you know, for lack of a better term, we'll call it dating. Um, but there's varying degrees of, you know, who falls into that category and what I like about them and why I'm with them. Um, and this came up the other day with, um, I was having a conversation with Cowboy N and, you know, I, I, I was thinking about it after the fact and I'm kind of still sort of like, I need to get some clarification on it. Maybe I'll ask, maybe I won't. I don't know. But basically, you know, my, my impression from him was it's, it was his point of view that I will see people, see guys that I don't really like, but that he does not do that. Not guys, obviously, but women. Um, and I'm thinking, no, I mean, no, that's not, that's not true at all. I won't, if I don't like somebody, and I've said this, I don't know how many times I've said this. If, if I don't have a genuine, genuinely like someone, some, you know, like, there's redeeming qualities I find about them. They're interesting. I want to get to know them better. Um, you know, I'm not going to spend my time with them and I'm certainly not going to fuck them. Now, that being said, is, does that mean that every guy I'm with totally blows my hair? That, that In every scenario, like that this person totally blows my hair back? No, that's, you know, that's unrealistic. Not everybody especially with me. Let me just say this. The truth is very, very few people really, really just knock my socks off. It's very seldom. And I don't, and the, but the point is, is I don't think it's supposed to be all the time. I think it is supposed to be few and far between, but does that mean that when somebody that's, uh, you know, checks off a lot of the boxes and is a good person that, you know, and you, you recognize, Hey, this is a good person walking around here on the planet. And I enjoy spending time with him and I enjoy, and we have a good sexual, you know, uh, chemistry. Is there, you know, is there a reason that I can't enjoy that person just for that moment in time for who they are while our paths cross for as long as they're going to cross? Uh, I don't think so. No, I mean, not for me that, you know, for me, that's an acceptable scenario. And again, it could be wrong, but what I felt like I was getting was, you know, that for him, that wasn't acceptable. And, you know, I would say that, you know, as I've gotten older, again, I have really kind of lightened up and gotten, which may not be saying, you know, <laughs> if you will, if you know me, that may not be saying that much, but, uh, you know, I'm still pretty, uh, set in my ways, but, uh, you know, I have lightened up on the fact that, you know, you can just, it doesn't have to be Mr. I'm the one or, uh, again, somebody that's just totally blowing your hair back. Um, and that you feel this crazy, crazy, over the top, you know, connection with, I, I wish that happened more often, you know, but for me, it doesn't. I pretty much start out with, I don't like you. <laughs> that's, that's where I start with everybody. I mean, it's the craziest thing. Honestly, I start at, no, I don't like you. Mm -mm. And then that person will sort of like change my mind about that. You know, it, it's, it's, it's kind of funny. I mean, I just, I'm like, I don't like many people. 
you know, I mean, that much, you know, romantically, um, sexually, I guess, you know, so for me, you know, when I do, when somebody catches my attention, that's a, that's a good thing. I mean, they've caught my attention. It's like, okay, you know, there's then, then, you know, there's something here. And that's not saying that doesn't come from a vain place. I'm not saying there's anything that's just remarkably special about me. It's just for some reason, that's always been my, you know, the bar is high and, um, and I, not everybody gets, gets over that first bar and, and then, you know, even fewer get to the, you know, the next place. And that's just how I am. I, you know, I, like I said, I genuinely don't like a lot of people romantically, uh, sexually, you know, I'm like, eh, unless there's something really interesting, I don't want to bother. And so where you go from there is, you know, does every one of those, again, does, does everybody that catches your eye and that you start seeing and hanging out with and having fun with, there's a, there's a, then there's a, then there's a big swing when you get to that point. And is it okay that you just can say, look, this guy is, you know, he has all these wonderful qualities and I, I know that, you know, where I can say, I know that this is not a long-term thing, but I can enjoy and appreciate this person in the moment and for the time that they're in my life. And my answer to that is yes, absolutely. And they can be feeling the exact same way about me, right? So, you know, in, in that case, it's, it's equitous, but you know, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I do not think there's anything wrong with that. I think, it, you know, you could, I think it's okay to say, this is not the person that, you know, I would consider for a long-term, for an exclusive type relationship, or even, you know, going even farther than that, uh, you know, which I'm not really, you know, in the market for like marriage material, um, you know, all of that stuff there's a gr- still a great group of people that you know don't fit don't hit those bullet points but are wonderful and enjoyable and you know fun to be with so that you know that gets into just these varying degrees of like and what you know what what are you okay with and what are you not okay with now again i didn't really like dig in on him and say, well, what, you know, what are you talking about? I just kind of, you know, listened, I think. And he was like, okay, I didn't, you know, he, he made some sweep, some broad general statements and I didn't ask for clarification. And, um, but what my, but, but the point, you know, what I was getting out of that, out of those statements was that I, you know, we'll see people that, that I don't really like. And that, that is not the case. I genuinely like and care for anybody that I choose to spend time with and also have sex with. It's not any fun for me just to sport fuck. It's just not my thing. I mean, I know I've said that before it, you know, certainly, like I said, it does happen. You'll meet somebody and you'll have sex with them and then you may have sex with them again, but you're like, eh, I mean, that's really, that's really all you're in. That's really all it is or all you're in. There's nothing beyond that. And, you know, I have, because the problem for those guys is that because I have guys that I have more interest in beyond that, they don't. I, you know, I mean, they're not going to really get on, I only, there's only so many hours in the week, right? They're not really going to get much time because, um, who would I rather be with? You know, well, I'd rather be with the guys that 
you know, I feel more connected to and that I have more fun with. And if all I'm doing with you is fucking, you know, even if it's really good sex, it's probably not going to, it probably won't win out. It won't. I mean, it doesn't. That's the interesting thing. Um, I'm sure we've all had people we just had completely hot, hot sex with. Um, and that's all there is to it, but they don't, you know, they're more every once in a while you hit that, but it's not, you know, given your choice, you're going to fill up your time with people that you like more and laugh with and have fun with and, and sex (laughs) and good sex. So, um, and then, you know, the other thing, which is kind of coming full circle, I think, since we started with a stocking is, you know, when, when does that like start to go too far and how do you keep that on the like thing? And this is, this is part of too, what I was talking about with the, on my friends with benefits podcast. Um, this is always the trick. It's, it's always that balance that you have to strike with people. And for me, if I like someone and I'm spending a lot of time with them, naturally, you know, it, things can start to change. And I think the key is with that, to keep that in check is, you know, sometimes you can't, you have to be careful how much time you're spending with them. And you, and I've said this before, you know, the, the, you ha- the pair and a spare thing, it really does help when you have multiple people that you're seeing, you, your, your focus doesn't get singular. When it gets, when it starts to get singular, you're in trouble. Even me, <laughs> I can get, even, I'm going to say, even I can get in trouble, right? Cause you know, there's sometimes you, emotions are just a funny thing. You don't always, for as much as you can, you know, as much as some people can, I'll say, and I consider myself one of the people, as much as some people can, you know, kind of control them to the best of their ability, you, you know, you're not always, always in control of that. And so you have to be careful and mindful of that. If you want to be just casually dating and you, and you want to stick to that plan, um, about, you know, just seeing one person, it's probably not going to stick, you know, so, so, somebody, if you're, if it's just you and that other person, somebody's, the feelings are going to grow, develop, they're going to change. You can't, you really can't maintain that balance. I don't believe in that type of a scenario. I think it gets, um, it gets more difficult anyway. I mean, I shouldn't say that you can't, I don't believe that you can do it. I do believe you can do it. And there actually have been times in my life where I have sort of quasi done that. Um, but that I think is rare. I think that that's really, really rare and, and, and random and the luck of the draw. If you want, you know, um, if you want to keep, you know, have a better chance at just keeping everything, uh, in the safe zone where you're not crossing any lines and getting overly attached or anything like that, then you need to, you do, you need to see other people. It helps, really helps. Um, helps me. That's kind of my, that is my trick right there. Um, and even then, you know, you still, you, you can still, um, get, get, you know, develop feelings and then you, and then you have to figure out, you know, how to manage those feelings. And again, you know, it's funny because I think these are natural things that everybody goes through, but what I said in the beginning about, you know, like that, don't let that make you turn stalker, it, you know, having the feelings is is normal and, but how you react to them, that's going to be normal or not so normal. <laughs> so I have how I, you know, I kind of have my little, my little ways of, you know, dealing with this stuff, but, um, but I've been, imp- you know, I've been, before I even did this whole sexual road trip thing, that was my way before I did this. 
And when I was younger and, you know, dating a lot and, you know, I, I was always able to keep a good handle on it. So, um, it's kind of a skill set. you know, you have to hone it and work on it, but, um, it definitely helps. And, you know, it will keep, if your goal is to, to see multiple people, you know, and just, and just have some fun, this doing it that way is going to definitely help you accomplish that. I mean, it has for me anyway. Um, and, you know, and then it's interesting because I think everything, so everything I've just been talking about, like, so if you're seeing multiple people and you're having to manage all this stuff, and blah, 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 it does become a lot of work. I know I've said this before. It is like a job. It becomes a lot of work. And sometimes I hit these ruts and I've said, said this before, like every 90 days, it seems like it pops up. I think it's popping up again. It is popping up again. And where I just feel like I just want a break. Like I, I don't want, I just totally want to like take myself out of the game and, you know, for a couple of weeks and not even send a text, talk to anybody. <laughs> I'm just, I just need you know, like, I'm like, Oh, I need my downtime. I do. Sometimes I need time to just recoup, refresh, and then I'm back at it again. And I'm starting to feel like I've been feeling that's been kind of coming on a little bit lately. Um, and you know, and then you just kind of, you don't want to talk to anybody new. You don't want to meet anybody new. You just kind of want to focus on, okay, these are the guys that I see, see them dial it back a little bit, see them, And then, you know, when you kind of snap out of it, you jump right back into where you were. But yeah, I mean, it's a burnout. It is a burnout. It's, I mean, I seriously, seriously, I get on the fence sometimes with, do I want to do this another year? I I'm going to right now as it stands, I'm going to, but I'll tell you what, I have my moments where I'm just like, fuck this. I'm so over it. It's so much work. Uh, Or, or, or it makes me think, you know what? Just, just being one-on-one with somebody's looking mighty good right now. You know, like just having a normal relationship with someone. And, you know, maybe we, we define that relationship as, you know, how we do things and we play and we do other things. We keep it spicy sexually and all that. But, you know, there's a lot of times where that looks you know, if I could find that, you know, I, I would be, I might be sold on that. Trust me. There's times where I'm just like, yeah, just find somebody really fun that where you guys, you know, define this great sexual, you know, you can still be sexually explorative and you just define the terms between the two of you and how that's acceptable. What, what, you know, what's okay and what's not. And, and then you just go for it, you know, and it's not like you still can't have stuff on the side or, you know, explore together or whatever. But, um, yeah, I definitely get, um, I get to the point where I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? You know, is this, is what I'm doing normal? I question myself a lot all the time. And the other interesting thing is, you know, while I'm on the questioning and, uh, you know, it's, it also has made me, it's weird because when I started doing this, I said I was going to be totally open and honest and put it all out there, blah, blah, blah. You know, I have so many un, well, I don't know so many, but I have a, a, a fair amount of unre- unpublished podcasts because I would start on a topic and I'm, and then I, I'd listen to it and I'm like, I can't put this out there. I can't say this. And it's mostly just stuff where I'm, you know, it's always something where I feel like I'm, I'm exposing myself too much and I don't, you know, I, I makes that again, you know, the, the V word vulnerable, it makes me feel vulnerable and I don't want to put myself out there like that. And I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed in that fact that, you know, I, 
this was supposed to be my, you know, it's my anonymous form. I can use it any way I want and I can say whatever I want. But even, and, and it, and it was more in the beginning. And like I've said this before, it was more in the beginning before people were listening and responding and following it. I was just like, Oh, this is great. You know, I, it was very freeing. And now, now I'm, yeah, I mean, I, I hate to say it, but I have gotten a little more, um, uh, censor censoring. I'm more censoring myself. And I think I've got to try to stop doing that. Um, it's hard though, because, you know, I, I would love to be able to turn around and talk about, you know, each dynamic, everything that I'm thinking and feeling and what's going on in my head. But the truth is, you know, those are things that I don't want that other person to know. And, you know, I, which sucks. I mean, I, sh- which is just like, just saying that right there. Like I just caught myself after that came out of my mouth and I'm like, well, you know, if you don't want them to know, then you, you know, you're not being completely open with them and you know, you should, you should, I should be, even if I do, even if it's not with them, even if I just use this forum, you know, and I just, I, I let it fly and I'm, this is where, this is the space where I'm just totally putting it out there. That's what the intention was in the beginning. And I have, um, I didn't realize, I didn't quite realize what, what that meant and what I'd be getting into and, and how that would be hard to do and how and why that would be hard to do. I should have, I mean, I'm a private person by nature. This is extremely, I'm, I'm guarded and I'm private and I've always been that way. And, um, so this just even, you know, doing this right is, is completely kind of out of my wheelhouse, but, um, I like it. I just, I would like to get better at it as far as, um, maybe being more open, you know, as just pushing myself and just going for it, you know? But we'll see. Uh, that could be a, you know, that could be a year two goal. I think I kind of know what year two is going to be about. I'm not going to talk about that right now, but I'm I'm going to, you know, when I do like my end of the year recap and, uh, <laughs> and then talk about what I'm going to do for next year, I will put that out there. But as usual, there we go. I've rambled on. It's a longer than normal podcast. Um, as usual, Thank you for listening. I really do appreciate everybody that listens and I appreciate the comments, even the weird ones. Um, so, you know, go ahead, keep sending that stuff to uh curious girl at the curious girl diaries.com. I'm sorry. No, what am I saying that's the website? It's a uh, curious girl at the curious girl diaries.com. All right. Thanks for listening. Bye.